James. We've started in a series in the book of James, and we're to the fifth verse. Verse 5 through 8 we'll look at this morning. As we think about the way to wisdom. Verse number 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. So we continue through the book of James and I would point out that these verses, verse 5 through 8, deal with wisdom and that wisdom certainly flows right out of the study that we had last week when we were looking at trials and troubles and problems that we face in life. Uh, and I would say this, we need God's wisdom when we face trials in life. When you're facing problems and difficulties, you need something from God to be able to know what to do in that problem. How to figure it out. What it is that's my responsibility. What is, what is it that God wants me to do. And doesn't want me to do. I need to know all of that. In trouble and trials. Let me define it for us. The word wisdom defined. It's the Greek word Sophia. It is this. God given knowledge and insight that enables you to discern what needs to be done. God-given knowledge and insight that enables you to discern what needs to be done. In other words, it's God-given good judgment in life. Wisdom. God's wisdom couple of examples in the Old Testament. The sons of the children of Issachar had an understanding of the times to know what to do. That's wisdom, isn't it? Solomon would be another example in the Old Testament. Two ladies, two women come. Those two women come to him. And one of them's baby had died. Both of them just had babies. And one of the babies died. And so the one mother slipped the other over to the other mother in the night and then the, and cha changed them. And now both of them are claiming this baby is, and so theirs belongs to them. What, what are they to do? What's Solomon to do? God gives him precise wisdom about how to determine which one is the real mother. Wisdom. You need that. We need that. Wisdom from God about our decisions in life. God given insight. So let's look at it, these verses, and see a couple of things. We want to see, first of all, the shortage of wisdom, and then the secret to wisdom. Okay? Are you with me? The shortage to wisdom, the shortage of wisdom. Uh, the, really, the first step to getting wisdom is knowing that you need it, that you don't have it, and you need it. Verse 5 begins there. It says, if any man lack wisdom, and all of us do, all of us need it, there's a shortage of the wisdom of God. Job 32, 9, interesting verse, said, Great men are not always wise. 
You, you know, somebody can be successful in life and not have the wisdom of God at all. They have wisdom to make money, but they don't have wisdom about what they should do in life. That what God wants in life. God's will. God's ways. And so, uh, and then it goes on to say that verse says, Neither do the aged understand judgment. And that is just simply to say, you can be old and have a lot of experience in life and still not be wise. We could grow old and have, we have some practical wisdom about certain things just because we've experienced a lot of things in life. But not have the wisdom of God. So we need the wisdom of God. No doubt about it. 19th century Earl of Shaftesbury said it well. He said, education without Bible instruction and Bible principles will merely result in a people who are clever devils. That's right. Just smart sinners. <laughs> Knowledge, just, oh, I've got a lot of knowledge, a lot of knowledge. Oh, we got a lot of knowledge, we can get to the moon. But don't know God's ways. And what, what's it created? It will create just a bunch of smart sinners. They'll be able, be able to know how to crook you better than they ever knew. <laughs> Immoral as could be. Right? One of the reasons that there's little or no wisdom is because there's no fear of God. Because Proverbs 9.10 says, it says, uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's where wisdom begins. What, what's that mean? When we realize that we're morally accountable to God for all of our decisions in life, and for all of our actions in life. That awareness produces a respect for our Creator. And not only our Creator, but our Judge, who is our Creator. And so then we start, out of that kind of respect, we start asking, what does He want in life, in my life? What kind of decisions does he want me to make? What's his will? And we seek him for it. In Holy Scripture. And through prayer. Asking for insight. Now, before you were saved, pre-conversion. Before you were saved, you did not properly fear God. Right? And so as a result, there, because God is disregarded, wise decisions aren't made. Unwise decisions are made. Largely, selfish decisions are made. Not, not God-honoring decisions. And then I would say this, not only before you were saved, but even after you're saved, we still lack wisdom and insight about things. And we don't know many things. We, we, we don't know what to do in many circumstances and situations. And so we must come to him and get help and get his wis wisdom and ask for wisdom so we don't make carnal decisions. But we make spiritual decisions. So we lack insight. If any man lack wisdom. If you come to the place that you desperately know you need God's instruction. God's insight. God's wisdom. Then there's hope and there's help for us. But it starts by understanding that you have a shortage of wisdom. Big point number one. Big point number two. I see the secret of wisdom. What's the secret? That verse number five tells me. 
It comes, wisdom comes from God. It comes by asking God for it. Right? If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth. Let him ask of God. I underscore ask that giveth. And it shall be given him. Verse 6. But let him ask. Underline ask. Both of those words are Greek imperatives. Those words are Greek imperatives. We've just said there's 54 of them in the book of James out of 108 verses. 54 commands. Greek imperatives. Commands of God. You know what he tells us? Ask. You lack something. Ask. You lack wisdom in particular is the emphasis here. Ask. You lack insight from God. Ask. Ask God. Who giveth? He gives it. It's a present imperative, which is a command to ask continually and repeatedly. God wants us to ask continually and repeatedly. You ought to be praying all the time. Pray without ceasing. Just pray all the time. Whatever you... Uh, Lord, I don't know what to do about this. I'm coming to you seeking for clear word from heaven about it to know what it is that I should do. Ask of God that giveth and it shall be given. God gives. God wants to give. He'll show you the truth. He'll illuminate your heart. Primarily, we come to the book, don't we? But even whenever we study the Bible, we pray for God to let us see truth. Illuminate our hearts so we've got light and truth. Ask for wisdom. God wants to give it. He wants to give it. He continuously gives it. He's a generous giver. You know, we should see our Lord as one with open hands wanting to give. Not quenched fist. Oh, I'm coming to God to get it. Oh, if I can just, if I can just pry his hand open, I'm working at it. I, if, no, 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 that's not what it says. It says he wants to give. And particularly, you say, well, I know what he's wanting to give. He's wanting to give me a brand new automobile and big house mansion and I'll get a big fat, fat bank account. That's not what the passage says. Some try to say that that's what it says. It, 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 that we come asking and we can get just any. No, no, this is talking about wisdom. God will show me what his will is for my life. He'll show me what I, what he wants me to do in my circumstance. In my situation, in my problem. I'm asking for wisdom and he's wanting to give it. He wants to give it. Doesn't he? God that giveth. And, and that is present part of simple. Continued repeat his act, repeated action. You know what? That means he's generous in his giving. He continues to give. It's not just, oh yeah, he gave one time. No, no, he keeps giving. And he wants to keep giving to you. Don't just think about somebody else. Oh yeah, God gives something to the preacher, you know. Oh no, child of God, it's for you. He wants to give wisdom, insight, help to you. Look at verse 5 again. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, generously, bountifully, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. That What a promise. It shall be given to him. And you'll not be scolded for it. He doesn't upbraid you. You'll not be scolded. 
He gives promise that he'll give it. He'll give wisdom. What is it that you're dealing with this morning? What is it you've got to make decisions about? Or, or, or are you in such a place in your life that you don't have to make any decisions? I just don't know anybody that's there. <laughs> Do you? We've all got decisions to make. I would mention this, that our sin shut the door of prayer. The channel of communication between man and God was shut by sin. But I read when Jesus died in Matthew 27, verse 50 and 51, that that great veil that was between God's holy presence and humans and sinners was ripped from top to bottom. And now the door of prayer is open. And we have access. If you don't get anything else this morning, get that. You have access by Jesus' substitutionary sacrifice at the cross, by Him dying for your sins at Calvary's cross, paying the judgment for our sins. Now, there's access for imperfect sinners to come. And God will hear our prayers. The door is no longer shut, but it's open. Well, don't get happy about it then. We have access. We, we have access to ask God for salvation. We have access to ask Him for forgiveness of sins. He's made a door. He said, come. I want you to come to me with your sins. I'll forgive them. That's what He says. We have access to the throne of grace to get a multitude of things. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help. In time of need, the door's open. We've got an open door for wisdom. For the many decisions that you have to make in life. God's got an open door that means he's got an open ear. And then not only that, but gives us this great promise. He said, you can have every confidence when you come because I've given promise about it. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. What a promise. He said, hang your hat on this. This is what I've said about it. Well, I know, but somebody else told me that it couldn't be so. God wouldn't hear you. God wouldn't pay you. Just forget what somebody else said. Think about what God, God said, what God promised to us. Well, don't get happy about that either. We have access. So the first imperative, ask and God of God that giveth. And then that second imperative is in verse 6. But let him ask in faith. We're obligated to ask in faith. This is necessary that we ask confidently, believingly. It is. You, you do know that God places a premium on faith. Hebrews 11.6 says. Without faith. It is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to him must believe that he is. And that he is the rewarder. Of them that seek him. You have to come in faith. God places a premium on it. He does. 
in faith, trusting, believing, taking God at his promise. I can come and ask for wisdom, for the kind of insight I need to be able to, the knowledge from heaven that will show me what I need to do in my circumstance and situation. I need to come believing. Not with a big question mark. Well, I don't know whether God will do that or not. No, no, no. Forget the question mark. Let's throw an exclamation mark in there. Yes. Not a maybe, but a yes. I don't know whether I'm preaching to you, but I'm preaching to me. And, and then he gives an illustration about the person who does not get his prayers answered. In verse 6, middle way of the verse, it talks about those who do not get their prayers answered. Um, look at it here. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. There's instability, wavering. Instead of being stable, there's instability that comes with doubting. And then verse number 7, the Lord said, uh, For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. We're not getting wisdom if we come with full of doubt. God places a premium on trust. That's how a person gets saved initially. Romans 5, 1, therefore being justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. It's by faith. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. It's by faith that you get saved. That you get right with God. Justified before God. Romans 5.1 you, you trust him. You trust the son of God to do what he said he'd do. He'd save your soul from judgment and wrath. And he'll give you everlasting life, eternal life. He'll put you in the family of God. But as many as receive him to them, gave you the power to become the sons of God. He'll do it. Trust him. Don't, don't just come and say, oh Lord, you don't know what I've done. I've just been so wretched. I've done stuff that is just so wretched and unacceptable that there's no way that you could... Have me. I'm not going to. I can't trust you because I'm such a mess. Oh, listen. That's what he does best. He takes messes and fixes them and forgives them. <laughs> he will. Trust him. Don't doubt him. So we're to pray. With faith, in faith, nothing wavering. We're like the wave. What 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 is it that's uh, that's got you questioning God? Doubting God's word. Let me promise you the devil's always got something to try to create doubt and disbelief. And that's why we need the word of God. How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. We've got an excellent word. In, anything that uh, causes you to try to doubt, it's the devil. You, you need to hold on firm 
to the promise of God. So how do we get wisdom? You get it by the word. It comes by the faith. It comes by hearing, hearing by the word. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly with all wisdom. Right? Colossians 3.16 Comes by prayer. Let him ask for wisdom. And then it comes by the Holy Spirit. Listen to these passages in Ephesians chapter number 1. Ephesians 1, verse number 16. Cease not to give thanks for you. Paul, Paul said, I'm, I'm continuing to pray for you and thanking God for you. He said, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you might know some things, so you know things. Wisdom, insight. If you're saved, you've got the teacher of the Holy Spirit in you. Holy Spirit came to live in you, and the Holy Spirit then will teach you and guide you into all truth, we're told. And so the Holy Spirit, you say, how do you know that's what God wanted you to do? Well, he just confirmed it in my heart, and I knew it real. He didn't speak verbally, uh, excuse me, audibly. But I was reading the Word of God, and God said, Yes, this is what I'm wanting for you to do. I want you to do in this circumstance, situation. And you say, God could do like that. You're a little bit mystical. Uh, call it what you want. It's Bible. It's God's way. God speaks to us. So there's the shortage of wisdom, and there's the secret of wisdom. Let me ask these final questions. When you pray, do you expect God to answer? And then this. What kind of wisdom do you need? This morning. Do you think God's promise is trustworthy? Do you believe God wants to give you wisdom? Do you come confessing your lack of wisdom to God? <clears throat> or do you come doubting God's promise? Talk to him. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask. Trust him. If any man lack wisdom... Let him ask of God who giveth all men liberally. But let him ask in faith. Not wavering, not doubting. Trust him. Talk to him. Be single-minded about it. Not double-minded. You know, that's how we are sometimes. Oh yeah, God said it. And then in your mind you're going, but, I don't know. We need to get single-minded about it. A double-minded man's unstable in all of his way, eight ways, verse 8 said. So we need to get single-minded. You know, Solomon, back in Chronicles, Solomon is now the next king. And he's, as a youngster, young man, he's very disturbed about all of this that he has to do. I have to make decisions. Big decisions. And so he comes before God and he asks the Lord. He said, I'm not asking for riches. I'm not asking for many things that a king might ask for. I'm asking for wisdom. And God told him, he said, because you've asked for wisdom, I'm going to give you the other stuff too. But primarily, I'm going to give you wisdom. You're going to have the ability to be able to make right judgments about your decisions in life. 
You talk about a gift of God. That's what we need this morning. That's what you need. That's what you need in your heart. That's what you need in your marriage. That's what you need in your family. That's what you need in your work relations and job and in every area. We need God-given insight. Let me give the definition again. We're done. A God-given knowledge, wisdom is a God-given knowledge and insight that enables us to discern what needs to be done. God good, given good judgment. And I need it. And you need it. And Jesus has it for us. Doesn't he? Let's stand. What are you going to play, Miss Linda? 272. Page 272, let's sing. do you need God give you instruction you say how's it happen I don't know altogether but I do know that it'll happen you look to him and him alone he'll give you what you need real insight so you can discern what you need to do in your situation Thank you this morning for this portion of your scripture. We are mindful that we have a shortage of wisdom. We lack wisdom. But Lord, we know that you have this great supply of wisdom. And so we come. Thank you for giving us the secret to ask, to ask in faith, trusting, talking to you, coming to you. And that's what many are doing this morning. I pray that you'll give them the kind of insight that they need. Help us, Lord, not to doubt, but to trust confidently in your promise to us. In Jesus' name we pray.